Good afternoon, and welcome to today's Walpole's Veterans Day observance. My name is John Cogan. I'm the veterans agent for the town of Walpole. I'd like to welcome Representative McMurtry, members of the Board of Selectmen, Town Administrator Jim Johnson, families and residents of Walpole, and all my brother and sister veterans out here today. Uh, to lead us off with invocation is the VFW Post 5188 Post Chaplain, United States Marine Corps veteran Dave Ferreira. Good morning and thank you for being here. Dear Lord, today we honor our veterans, worthy men and women who gave their best when they were called upon to serve to protect this country. We pray that you will bless them, Lord, for their unselfish service and the constant struggle to preserve our freedoms, our safety, and our country's heritage for all of us. Bless them abundantly for the hardships they faced, for the sacrifices they made, for their many different contributions to America's victories over tyranny and oppression. We respect them, we thank them, we honor them, we are proud of them, and we pray that you will watch over them and bless them. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you will please join the Boy and Girl Scouts with our Pledge of Allegiance, followed by the performance of our national anthem by Joanne Goggin, vocal students. I'd like to introduce Representative Paul McMurtry. I'd like to say a few words. Good morning. Today we gather as a nation and a commonwealth and a grateful Walpole community as we do each year on the 11th day of the 11th month to commemorate the service and sacrifice of those men and women who have worn the uniform of our nation in her defense. We assemble freely as United States citizens to fill, fulfill an unwritten obligation of appreciation. And as a community, we honor our responsibility and embrace our veterans to thank each of them and ensure that they receive the benefits and services they have valiantly earned and deserve. Today I bring greetings and gratitude from my House colleagues, Representative John Rogers, Representative Luke Kafka, Representative Sean Dooley, and I'm honored to join Walpole's own Senator James Timothy. 
who is a leader for veteran services not only here in the town of Walpole but across the Commonwealth and was the primary sponsor of the Valor Act 1 and 2, giving Massachusetts some of the strongest laws in the nation in support of our veterans. Thank you, Senator Timothy. Today, we pause to honor and commend those who put their lives on hold and remember all of those who've made the ultimate sacrifice. Today, here in the town of Walpole and at ceremonies across the United States, we have a chance to stand among those whose love and loyalty to a nation should serve as a shining example of citizenship and patriotism. And today, we recognize that each of us owe veterans a debt of gratitude we can never fully repay. And so on this beautiful Veterans Day morning, let us honor all those who have served and who are serving, not only with words, but today let each of us renew our commitment to veterans and demonstrate through our actions the appreciation and respect we have for their service and sacrifice. To the thousands of veterans of the Commonwealth, the veterans here in Walpole and across the great nation, and those in harm's way serving around the world, we say thank you. I am grateful for your service, and I appreciate the opportunity to join, in this, join you this morning. May God bless you, God bless the town of Walpole, and may God bless America. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. John Robinson, Chairman of the Walpole Veterans Committee. Thank you for joining us here today to celebrate the commitment and service of our veterans. Earlier this year, with great pride, we announced the creation of the Walpole Veterans Committee College Scholarship. Our goal was to provide financial assistance to a child or grandchild of a veteran. We're very proud to announce the first recipient of this scholarship is Walpole High Class of 2016 graduate, Julia Muller. Julia's grandfather was a Marine captain in World War II and served in the Marshall Islands, Saipan, Tinian, and Iwo Jima. This scholarship would not be possible without the generous fundraising and donations by the Junior Women's Club of Walpole, right over here. Thank you very much, ladies. A common theme among our honored Veterans Day speakers over the years has been service to country and then continued service to community when they come home. Our distinguished speaker today, Matthew Crown, continues that tradition. Raised in Walpole, Matt graduated from Walpole High in 2003. He attended Roger Williams University on an ROTC scholarship. In 2007, he graduated cum laude with a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. He was then commissioned in the Army as a second lieutenant. He attended Ranger School and Airborne and Air Assault Schools. He was assigned to the 1st Battalion, 66th Armor Regiment of the 4th Infantry Division's 1st Brigade Combat Team, holding positions as platoon leader, assistance operations op officer, and acting battalion XO. In 2008, he deployed to Baghdad, Iraq in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom, and in 2010 to Kandahar Province, Afghanistan, for Operation Enduring Freedom. His awards include the Combat Infantry Badge, the Bronze Star, Army Commendation Medal, the Afghan and Iraqi Campaign Medals, and the Global War on Terror Medal. Captain Crown left active duty in 2011 and was hired by the Walpole Police Department in June of 2012. In December of that year, he graduated from the Police Academy with honors and began his service as a Walpole Police Officer. He currently serves as a member of the Metrolex SWAT team Dickon Page, motorcycle officer, rape aggression defense instructor, and firearms instructor. In April of 2016, Officer Crown responded to a call of a suspicious person near the reservoir on Washington Street. While questioning him, the man suddenly turned on the car and closed his window, pinning Matthew's wrist. Officer Crown was then dragged about 300 feet at speeds over 20 miles before freeing his hand. He and other officers returned to their cruises and began to chase the suspect, which took place on stretches of routes 128, 9, 135, and 1, ending just off of the VFW Parkway in West, West Roxbury. Many of you may have seen some of this as a large majority of the events were captured on live TV by the Channel 25 news helicopter. 
Officer Crown was then transported to the hospital with minor cuts and bruises, and he was shortly released after that. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Walpole Rebel, Army Ranger, and Walpole Police Officer, Matthew Crown. Welcome to today's ceremony and thank you for attending. I'm honored to be speaking to you today on such an important occasion. We're here today to honor our service members and to remember the sacrifices that they have made. All of these service members have shown tremendous courage in their display of duty, honor, and service to this great nation. I'd like to begin by recognizing all our veterans, active duty service members, guardsmen, and reservists present today. You have gone above and beyond your city, or I'm sorry, your citizens' duty to volunteer. You have given your lives and livelihoods and have answered when your country called to defend the freedoms we enjoy each and every day. I would also like to thank the families, the mothers and fathers tearfully sending their children off to war, the husbands and wives waiting dutifully for their loved ones to return home, the children growing up away from mom and dad, and the friends who keep vigil for safe return. While there are a multitude of subjects we could touch on today, I feel that one word continued to pop into my head as I thought about what Veterans Day means to me. Service. Service to the country that we love, service to our community, service to our fellow man. There are countless reasons to join the military. Stable income, travel, camaraderie, benefits, the ability to mature beyond your years. And to be honest, some people just can't stand the idea of spending eight hours a day in a cube. But service. Service seems to be the common factor. I cannot speak for every veteran, but I have never met someone who served that did not get true joy out of selfless service. The idea of being a protector, the ability to become a guardian of the very freedoms that make this country special is an honor that we do not take lightly. I'm very proud to call myself a veteran because of the company that it puts me in. Early on in your term of service, no matter how long it may be, you realize that you are changing as a citizen. It is not until you are out of the service that many realize just how much they were affected by their time in. For me, I did not think much about what I was doing while I served. I knew that it made me happy to do my job and that I felt fulfilled doing it. It was only later that I realized that I was blessed to have served with some of the finest men and women that I would ever meet, and I would have the opportunity to make significant differences in many people's lives, both in this country and in others. The decision to serve, no matter what generation you grow up in, is always one that bears with it the possibility of creative outcomes. Yet men and women raise their right hand every day and swear their oath of enlistment or oath of office it is a true testament to their dedication to duty, how much they value the country that they live in, and the fact that they wish to serve bearing its colors every day when they go to work. I, like so many others, have been blessed to have this opportunity not once, but twice in my lifetime. After serving the Army, I was, like so many other veterans, I was afforded the opportunity to take a job in law enforcement. While the job is different, I found that the tenants are the same. Duty, honor, freedom, country, community, and of course the opportunity to protect and serve. More than a quarter of my current colleagues are also veterans, and it has been an honor to make that transition. The transition from defending our country and its constitution from enemies both foreign and domestic to protecting and serving our communities. The communities which we grew up in, and which we hope to see prosper. At the end of the day, it seems to come back to service. With today's political climate and the possibility for so much change, the unrest, and the debate back and forth about the direction of this country, one thing seems to stand firm. This country has always and will always have brave men and women from different backgrounds and all walks of life who are willing to come together to preserve our core values and ensure that America will be a great nation 
for many generations to come. Thank you. Thank you, Officer Crown, for your service both then and now. Thank you. And now for a part that tears at the heart, we'll now read the names of the veterans of Walpole who we have lost since Memorial Day this year. World War II veteran Bob Moody and World War II veteran and DAV member Henry Scangio will read the list. Thomas Lassus, Vietnam. Bruce Potter, World War II. Daniel Fieso, World War II. Robert Farrell, Korea. Joe Sheppis, Korea. William McNamara, Korea. Michael Polacco, Korea. Raymond Allison, Korea. Joseph Healy, Korea. Joseph Zablowski, World War II. John Cataldo, World War II. Lawrence Sullivan, Jr., World War II. William Foley, Korea. Daniel Lurahan, Peacetime. Nicholas Testur, Korea. Conrad Buck, Korea. Joseph Amara, World War II. Jason Earls, Peacetime. William Flanagan, World War II. John Whitney, Korea. Salvatore De Rose, Peacetime. Charles Whiting, Korea. Paul Kumo, Korea. Henry Eno, Sr., Korea. Robert Meiskow, World War II. Walter Conway, World War II. George Caterino, Korea. Gerard Camo, Korea. Loretto Cugnino, World War II. John Carter, World War II. Leonard De Rosa, World War II. May the soul rest in peace. detail. Salute!
Well, thank you. And now I'd like to invite up to uh, the podium uh, Walpole Post Commander of 5188 here in Walpole. He would like to uh, speak to you a few words about a mission, a project that's going on up to VFW. Uh, Post Commander Steve Kenny. <laughs> Yes, my name is Steve Kenny. I'm the commander of the uh, BFW Post 5188, and I'm also the director of the Walpole Veterans Memorial. We, we are um, building a memorial on the grounds of the BFW. <clears throat> we put forth a committee that consisted of members of the BFW, the Walpole American Legion, um, Chapter 90 Disabled American Veterans, the Marine Corps League, uh, the Walpole uh, Veterans Committee, and uh, veterans agent John Cogan. We've been working on this for uh, the last year or so and we've um, come up with a, a plan and we're moving forward and construction's going to begin in um, the spring of 2017. The main, the main staple of this memorial is going to be engraved bricks uh, for veterans and as well as sponsors, businesses, and families that want to sponsor the veterans of this memorial. <clears throat> um, A.J. Mazzola from Norwood Monument is going to be doing the engraving. The um, applications uh, are going to him in December, and he's going to start engraving the bricks over the winter. And we hope to have them ready for installation in the spring. Um, the veterans of bricks are eligible to veterans of all um, times in service. We, we, we want to make it inclusive. It's not going to be just for certain people. It, it's going to be for anybody who swore to defend and protect this country against all enemies, foreign and domestic. We don't care if you serve stateside. We don't care if, you know, if, um, didn't uh, uh, go, uh, uh, go overseas. It, um, the, it's also going to be open to reserves, people that served in the reserves, and we are going to uh, open it up for people that are on active duty that have uh, a, a year or so in service. And then when they get out, we'll modify their brick if they so wish. But. Um, the main thing is to be inclusive, and the, these um, forms have to be in. And I, 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 I need to reiterate that it, um, it's going to come down to loved ones who've lost family members that served in World War II, Korea, or, 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 or served, and uh, they're the ones that are going to have to step forward for their loved ones to get remembered. I want this memorial to be um, sort of a history lesson of um, when people come and uh, children, that they'll see their relative's name as well as other people that serve near and far to protect this country. And um, that's uh, what we uh, are planning on doing. And um, the, the, the other um, thing that I, I, I want to stress is that as I said, we're inclusive when <clears throat> we don't want to get into defining who is more Walpolite than anybody else. So if you feel that you have a loved one that was a veteran and you want them memorialized in our memorial, then it, it doesn't matter when, where. Uh, you, 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 ha you, you have a connection somehow to Walpole, and um, you believe that. You, uh, you know, your father might have enlisted from, let's say, uh, Pennsylvania, and you're now established in Walpole, and you'd like to see him memorialized with these other veterans, then we'd welcome him. And um, anyway, I have some applications here. There's some at the VFW, which you're all invited to come back to afterwards. Um, I only ask that it, if that so be your uh, wishes that you get it in by the end of December, because... Um, we're moving forward, and um, I thank you for hearing.
If you haven't been up to the VFW lately, with Steve Kenny, uh, the commander, Dave Dave Ferrer, the uh, the hall bar, uh, bar manager, and uh, all the staff up there, the bartenders, everybody up at the VFW, they've been doing an outstanding job, uh, just renovating and 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 uh, just keeping up with that place. It's it's really fantastic. In fact, after this ceremony right here, everybody is welcome to attend. Uh, there's a b free barbecue for everybody that wants to. Um, for but. To close out this ceremony, I'd once again like to invite uh, United States Marine Corps veteran Dave Ferrer for the uh, benediction. And just one more plug on those bricks. They're made out of granite, uh, and uh, they're, they're really nice. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we ask that your blessing be bestowed on our friends and loved ones. We thank you for the opportunity to share with them this special occasion to honor our veterans. Let us always honor the memory of those brave men and women who sacrifice so that we may experience freedom in our country that is free, in a country that is free. Heavenly Father, keep their families in your kind care. Let us be reminded of life, liberty, justice, freedom, and democracy, that we may be ever grateful to you for those and for those. As we depart, grant us your continued fellowship that makes abiding peace. And we ask this in your holy name. Amen. That, that concludes our ceremony. Um, there's so many people I'd like to thank for all the support that they've given the community, um, especially the uh, Walpole Veterans Service Committee, uh, John Robinson Jr., Steve Kenny, Lorraine Boyden, Donna Summers, Joe Deneen, Dave Ferreira, uh, also JWCW, you guys are awesome. Uh, the DPW for helping up set up this area. Walpole and uh, Fire PD, uh, PD, the Walpole PD and Fire Department, excuse me. 220th Quartermaster, thank you for showing up. Uh, John and Ethel Simeon, you guys are always great, the World War II reenactors. Uh, Ken Gable in the Walpole High School Music Department, the Girls and Boy Scouts, the VFW Post 518, Joanne Goggin, and the Vocal Students. I'd also like to thank, there's a lot of companies that, uh, in the community that call my office and uh, want to help out and provide services. One in, uh, that just recently helped out a, a local Vietnam veteran would be the uh, the handyman, which is right around the corner here on East Street, they called my office the other day, said they wanted to provide free services for a veteran in need. Um, I got them in touch with a veteran, a Vietnam vet. They came there, provided services, did an outstanding job. The, 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 the veteran couldn't be any more happier. So I'd just like to thank uh, for the, that organization, the handyman, uh, for their, providing their services. Also, um, if you haven't heard about this, uh, the honor flight in New England, right now they, uh, this, this program, it, it, what it does, it sends a World War II veteran and, and now Korean War veterans down to Washington, D.C. for the day. They fly them down for your service. Usually you have a, guard, you have a guardian that goes with them. If you've, I've, every veteran that has done this, and we've had one just recently, um, Joe, uh, Ed Damish, I don't know if he's in the crowd here today. Oh, there he is, right there. Yeah, <laughs> I tell you what, Ed, you guys. You, uh... make sure you sign up for that honor flight. There is a wait list for it. We signed up for it. It took about a year to get on there, but you know, Ed will tell you, uh, it is one of the one of the best experiences he's ever experienced. And uh, I don't, uh, if you if you have any questions about it, this New England honor flight right now, they're only doing World War II veterans and Korean War veterans. Um, but if you have any questions, contact my office. You can find them online too. But it will be an experience that they'll never forget, neither you or them. So if you have any questions, give me a call. Uh, that concludes our ceremony. Uh, thank you, everybody, for showing up. It's been amazing. This is, uh, this is just every year it just seems to be getting better and better. And um, I, I couldn't ask for anything more.
Thank you very much.